Dirt Tracks is sponsored by Polaris, think outside. Can-Am, time for some off-road living. And by Yamaha, revs your heart. Hey, what's up, Dirt Tracks Nation? We're here at Mid-America Outdoors in Jay, Oklahoma, one of North America's premier off-road parks, and we're here with American Honda to check out the brand new Honda Talon 1000R four-seater with Fox Live Valve. While 2022 saw a healthy list of improvements to most of the Talon lineup, which most notably centered around the addition of Fox Live Valve, Honda had decided to hold off on updating the four-passenger R model until 2023. Now normally ride events were just limited to daytime, but Honda wanted to change things up and bring everyone out on a night ride. This is also a perfect opportunity to check out some of the accessories they outfitted, including the auxiliary lighting, which was a huge advantage when navigating some of the more technical trails. When it came to the night ride, there was no shortage of gnarly terrain, and the electronically adapted suspension proved its worth, keeping the talent stable and on center, as the Fox Live Out shocks were constantly adjusting and soaking up all the harsh impacts. That was fun, and it was Actually, really impressive. That trail was nothing more than two inch crushed rock the entire way. So it's all loops. Traction is at a premium the whole time, especially when you're going up some of the steep hill climbs. And then we were going up and it was starting to slip. Threw it into my four wheel drive. There wasn't even a hesitation. As soon as the wheels were slipping, it would slow down the rotation of the wheels enough to get traction again and then pick up and, and, and pull up the, uh, the hill. Overall though, the ride and handling, really, really comfortable. It was great to sort of get back in the Talon. They've definitely made some really uh, impressive improvements. And yeah, we're looking forward to tomorrow. It's gonna be a good day. The drive event for the Ford Passenger R model brought a collection of riders representing North American off-road media, along with today's most popular dirt influencers to experience everything the new Talon 1000R4 had to offer. Through it and drive yeah. for it, and it was just like, they like seamless. It crawls right out. Yeah, exactly. And then I'm like, like, oh, oh. it's been a little bit. <laughs> Dirt Tracks is sponsored by Hercules Tire. Ride on our strength. It was our first time to Mid-America Outdoors, and man, was this place cool. Picture a world-class, all-inclusive resort that caters to off-road enthusiasts. Park your RV or rent a cabin. There is every amenity imaginable, including a pool with Lazy River, an epic short course racetrack, along with five interconnected trail systems that had plenty of steep technical climbs. All right, day two, Honda Talon 1000R4 uh, evaluation. We're uh, heading out for a uh, day-long uh, trail ride today. It's going to be a good day for testing out the Talon. We'll be able to test out some of the new features. It's going to be a good day. Aside from the addition of the 2.5-inch diameter of Fox Live Out shocks, Honda also made big improvements to the responsive handling and reduced turning radius of the Talon R4 with updates to the electronic power steering unit, which provides 87% more torque assist. The other noticeable updates to handling were the new return to center function for steering, and we took full advantage of the ability to now run four low in sport mode. So a couple of nice uh, features about the Honda Talon, uh, especially when you're sort of on a steep hillside. We're not super, super steep right now, but still, I mean, uh, high gear and all stuff. If I were to sort of let off the brake and try to go forward, I'm obviously gonna start rolling back. So, cool feature that they have here is your hill assist. Simply uh, push that in. 
get a notification here that you're now locked. My foot's now off the brake entirely and we're not rolling at all. So it's great on those moments where, you know, it's just a little bit uh, sketchy and you want to be able to have uh, full confidence you're going to be able to go forward. Ask anyone and they'll tell you quality and durability have always been synonymous with Honda. In keeping with this, the engineering team focused on some key areas of improvement to ensure owners can take on the toughest trails. New for the 23 model are helical spline axles in combination with upsized axle nuts for better torque retention. The R4 also gets revised front A-arm suspension geometry with reinforced gusseting. And the wall thickness of the ROPS has been increased for improved strength and chassis rigidity. There was no shortage of water crossings during our ride and the new full doors with integrated storage compartments did a great job keeping the elements out and keeping us dry. And launch mode, well, what can I say? How can you not love it? Just got back from what amounted to be about a 20 mile uh, ride. The Honda Talon 1000R4 comes 68 inches wide, um, Fox Live valve. It is, as Honda says, it is sort of still geared towards sort of that family fun vehicle. You can definitely get aggressive with it but at the same time, it's not too wild for the trail system. And I think that's what I appreciated most about the vehicle today. The other thing that was um, still super, super impressive, and everyone here that was riding it today keeps on remarking about it, is I four-wheel drive. Any Anytime the vehicle started losing traction, getting a little out of control, it would automatically just rebalance that power to the wheels automatically for you and just maintain traction. The other thing we got to talk about is we got to talk about Fox Live Out. So these are 2.5 inch diameter shocks on it. They got two modes, they got normal and they got sport. Normal took all of the harshness out throughout sort of that mid stroke and uh, just kept it really, really comfortable. We did sort of go into sport mode just to sort of try it. And you do notice a significant increase in terms of raising that damping curve. That suspension wouldn't compress as quickly. So it essentially just helped maintain your ground clearance a little bit better. You didn't fall into your travel as much. Ride impressions with regards to suspension, Really, really good. A distinguishing characteristic of the Talon is its dual clutch transmission. While I definitely appreciate the advantages of a gear and gear transmission, and I do like the fun factor associated with paddle shifters in a manual mode, it is something you have to get used to when compared to a conventional CVT. It's also nowhere near as adjustable. That being said, imagine a phone app that connects to the ECU, which allows you to further adjust the power profile and shift point, similar to the effect of changing the weights on a CVT clutch. Honda, if you're listening, that would be really cool. The crew at Honda saved the coolest experience to last, as they knew it was going to be hard to keep us from that short course racetrack. Race code USA driver Dave Mason Jr., who competes in the Champ Off-Road Series, shared the driving duties and did some hot laps with the stock Talon R. Didn't matter how fast or how hard he pushed it in the corner, the Talon with Fox Live Out shock set the sport and felt like it was on rails. Honda's success on racing is backed up with his Pro UTV and Baja 1000 championships. The Desert Racing Talon is built on the four passenger chassis with long travel suspension and its naturally aspirated 1000cc mill maximizes its horsepower potential with the help from a custom Trinity X-Pipe exhaust and a special tune of the ECU. Getting the opportunity to ride shotgun in their factory off-road racing buggy was intense. 17-year-old Ethan Ebert kept it wide open throttle the entire time. What better way is it to finish off our stay here at Mid-America Outdoors with our, with our friends from American Honda than to sort of be able to go down to the short course and check out how the Honda Talon performs. The underlying most impressive feature with this Honda Talon is even though I know Honda markets as, a, as the ultimate sort of like family wreck vehicle, it's the proven technology that goes into that motor. Not only is it for the short course racer, but also for their best in desert racer, that motor is completely stock. The only thing that they're doing to it is maybe messing with the ECU a little bit just to sort of amp it up a bit. But other than that, it's just a bone stock motor and, and transmission. And that says a lot about the technology and the reliability that goes into Honda. Definitely come away really impressed with the Honda. It's great that they sort of were able to sort of expose us to all those different elements and uh, hats off to them. And it's definitely something you guys need to check out. Dirt Tracks is sponsored by Princess Auto. Make it work. I think it's safe to say that the off-road industry is changing, and there are many reasons for this. But what's important to understand is that it's not a seven-player field anymore. 
There have been numerous attempts by other manufacturers to enter the industry, some with limited success and others with great success. It'd be safe to say that Argo, manufacturer of the world's most popular amphibious extreme terrain vehicle, has had great success since entering the ATV marketplace in 2017. In fact, if you want evidence that they are deadly serious about this industry and are a 100% legitimate player that's here to stay, just take a look at the sales numbers. In only five full seasons, Argo has become one of the top five selling ATV brands in Canada, with long established names like Suzuki, Kawasaki, and Articat. I suppose the question that would come to most people's minds is, how? And the answer is simple. They build competitive products that are competitively priced and sold through an extensive and extremely well-established dealer network. In short, they make good ATVs that can be purchased, serviced, and warrantied at established dealerships. So you don't have to worry about where am I gonna get parts or where am I gonna get it fixed? Argo and its dealerships have been around for over 55 years. But what about the actual ATVs? How do they perform? And that's what we're here today to find out with this Argo Explorer XR700 LE, a 700 class single cylinder 4x4 that competes directly with Yamaha's Grizzly, Kawasaki's Brute Force, and Suzuki's King Quad. The XR700 LE is powered by a 695cc single overhead cam four valve EFI single. Power is transferred to the wheels through a CV transmission that has high, low, neutral, reverse, and park. It's suspended on double A arms with seven inches of front and 7.4 inches of rear travel, damped by a set of basic preload adjustable shocks. The LE model features 26 inch Maxxis Bighorn tires wrapped around 14 inch aluminum wheels. Disc brakes at all four corners take care of the stopping duties and are controlled by a single lever. The shiftable 4x4 system includes the standard 2x4x and 4x4 lock settings controlled by this rotary knob and push button right here. And what's cool about this system, and something I don't think I've seen before, is that even if you're in two-wheel drive, you can rotate the 4x4 lock lever, and it will first put it in four-wheel drive, then lock the front diff as a two-stage process without even pushing the 4x4 button in the middle. This is something I think could come in pretty handy. The LE upgrade over the standard 700 EPS model really only gets you three things. The wheels and tires, painted plastic, and the handguards. They're both equipped with power steering and they both include a 3,000 pound winch. The difference in price is only 600 bucks, which is well worth the upgrade just for the wheels and tires alone. Ergonomically, Argo's XR700 LE is very comfortable to ride. The seat is plush, the handlebars are in the right position, and all of the controls are right where they should be. Floorboards are comfortable and provide more than enough grip, and the cockpit makes moving around the ATV while riding technical terrain effortless. There's really nothing to complain about in terms of how you fit on this ATV. Power from this 695cc single is also really good. It feels like it might have just a hair less power than a Grizzly, but if it does, it's not much at all. Clutching and power delivery are also buttery smooth, which makes riding in tight technical terrain easy. Now, like most big singles, the XR700 runs out of steam on long full throttle pulls, which means it needs a lot of room to reach its actually very respectable indicated top speed of 68 miles an hour. But again, as with most big singles, this one really shines in the low end and mid range. One of the most important aspects of any sport utility class ATV like this one is how it rides. Now, 7.5 inches of travel is by no means class leading, but it is pretty standard. With the preload adjuster set to full soft, the ride is compliant and smooth over the small stuff, but I wouldn't necessarily call it plush on the bigger hits. In my opinion, the spring rate itself is fine, but a slight decrease in compression damping would make a world of difference. My final thoughts on Argo's XR700 LE are these. It's a really tough looking ATV with a long list of great features, including an excellent gauge package and lots of rider accessible storage. Its performance in the woods impressed me and exceeded my expectations. Our test unit had no issues during testing and stood up to whatever we could throw at it. It's comfortable and more than capable enough to be a serious contender for any other ATV in its class, and it retails for between $1,250 and $2,400 less than its closest competition. If I was shopping for a 700 class sport utility ATV, I honestly think I'd start my search at an Argo dealer. The Explorer XR700 LE is a pretty difficult package to beat. Dirt Tracks has been sponsored by Kawasaki. Let the good times roll. MBRP Performance Exhaust, built for the victory lap.
and by Mad Ramps. Leave the trailer and go. Seems like nowadays, if a side-by-side -side isn't 70 inches wide and 200 horsepower, it isn't even worth talking about. But the fact remains, the 50-inch market is still going strong. Polaris started the 50-inch wide sport market with the introduction of the Razor, and other manufacturers followed. The key appeal to this narrow width, smaller stature side-by-side -side is its accessibility to trails and probably the most talked about topic of the day, price. We get access to some of the hottest vehicles in the industry, and it's our job to showcase them and share our opinions whether they appeal to everyone or just a small segment of the market. Regardless of what you might think, we are fully aware that the price of off-road vehicles is getting out of hand. And as cool as the highest horsepower machines are with all the bells and whistles, not everyone's a wannabe desert racer, and not everyone's got 50 grand or more to lay down just to get out on the trails and have some fun. CF Moto packs a bundle of value into its newly designed Z Force 800 Trail G2 EPS. Its starting price is competitive in this category, but one quick look at the features list will show you just how much more value you get for your investment, plus a five year limited warranty in Canada. Like Luke pointed out in his overview of this machine on our YouTube channel, there are a few parts and accessories here that aren't necessarily standard, like this front bush bar and the front and rear wind protection. However, features like this roof, the 3,500 pound winch, mirrors, gorgeous looking 14 inch wheels, and EPS are all standard. And to get those items from the competition, you're moving up trim package and literally adding thousands onto your order. When you first climb into the cockpit, you'll immediately notice how much attention CF Moto has paid to rider comfort. I've never been a fan of CF Moto seats, and I admit I had my mind made up before I even sat down, but these seats are ridiculously comfortable. They're plush, and there's enough bolstering to be supportive and to keep you in place while you're cornering. The instrumentation is bright, colorful, and loaded with easy to read information. My only gripe would be to make it about 25% larger. But as it stands, it's one of the nicest setups in the industry. Take note, Arctic Cat. The doors are top tier. They're fully finished on the inside with really nice handles. They close tight and there's a rubber seal on the outside to keep muck out. Once seated, they're high enough on your shoulder to provide additional protection from branches and debris as well. Plus, sight lines over the hood are clean and provide no obstruction from seeing the trail in front of you and storage inside the cab is abundant with deep passenger sidewells here and a smaller driver sidewell here. Both seal up fairly tight and keep your stuff safe, clean and dry. This thing rolled onto our lot, I couldn't wait to take it out for a rip and form my own opinions. The engine specs impressed me and I was really curious about the rear suspension setup. Power delivery from the 62 horsepower V-Twin is smooth and linear, making this Z-Force perfect for trail riding. Throttle modulation is smooth in both normal and sport modes thanks to the electronic throttle control. And I actually like the pedal placement more than in the Razor. I found it very comfortable to press to the floorboards when conditions permitted and to modulate at slower speeds while navigating more technical terrain. After testing the Z-Force in both modes, I felt that sport was more suited to my driving style. We found some competitive models tend to be too jerky and a bit too aggressive in their version of sport, but power delivery out of the Z-Force 800 trail was linear and manageable, and the renowned CB Tech clutching in either mode was buttery smooth. My feeling is that normal mode is more suitable for slower trail crawling, as it really seemed to mellow out power delivery. It should actually be called trail mode or crawl mode instead of normal, because truthfully, sport felt the most normal to me and was what I spent the majority of my day riding in. I've read all your comments online about similarities to the Maverick Trail. It's important to note that the rear suspension setup is very different from the Maverick Trail and the shocks are mounted quite a bit more forward. The link double arm independent suspension mated to the relatively simple gas charge shocks at all four corners providing 10 inches of travel up front and 12 inches of travel out back are plush and provides smooth riding over gnarly and aggressive sections of trail that we tested our Z-Force on. The sway bars do a good job of keeping the vehicle planted while attacking the corners aggressively. Ground clearance is competitive at 10 inches and combined with a full skid plate, do a decent job of underside protection. I admit, I'm impressed with this machine. CF Moto's taken a huge step forward with the redesign of this model and seems to have paid particularly close attention to what the market wants out of a 50 inch wide sport side-by-side. My only major gripe about the Z-Force 800 is that I felt a bit cramped in the cockpit compared to some of the vehicles we've been testing lately. 
It's not that I was uncomfortable by any means, and the reality is all competitive 50-inch wide sport UTVs are a bit snug because they're smaller stature vehicles, so this is something I'd be willing to accept out of a vehicle of this size. We see a mix of positive and negative comments every time we post something about CF Moto on social media, but you have to understand that's true for every single brand we cover. No matter what you feel about the company though, there's no denying that CF Moto is a legitimate company producing some excellent power sports equipment. Here's the advice we offer anytime someone asks us whether they should buy one particular brand or another. Do your homework. Research everything you can about the vehicle, and we recommend starting with our videos. Then go talk to your dealer to make sure you're comfortable with their service policies and the availability of parts, should you need them. This will ensure peace of mind with your post-purchase experience. Remember, it's your money, so spend it wisely.